Good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. Um, I just thought I'd kick it off first by giving you an update on the squad. So the squad that was went out, I think, about 12 o'clock, there's been a change to that. So I'll just give you that to kick it off. Um, Ken Owens uh, will be withdrawn from the starting lineup. Uh, so Ryan Elias goes into the number two jersey. Um, and Kirby Myhill goes into the number 16 jersey. So that's a late change um, due to a fitness test being failed this afternoon or earlier this afternoon. Um, perhaps start with that then, Wayne. How much of a, of a blow is it to, to lose Cannon at this time? Yeah, this, it's a big blow um, to, lose, to lose any player that uh, you initially select on a side. Um, you know, we've been training a certain way throughout the week and then uh, to lose somebody, um, it is a disruption. But having said that, uh, it's an opportunity for Ryan now to start in a, in a, in a massive test match. And uh, so it's something that he's going to relish and look forward to. I suppose that makes the 16 players unavailable. Did that make the selection harder or easier for you? Well, when players are unavailable, um, it makes it quite easy because you can't waste too much time worrying too much about that. It's about what is the combination that we think can get the job done uh, out of the players that are available. So, um, yeah, it's been a tricky time, I've got to say. It's, uh, you know, it's been sort of nine or ten days now together as a group, um, with this group just focusing on one game of rugby. So that's how we've pitched it. Uh, we'll have reinforcements come into the squad next week, but for this game, um, all of the, the players that are in the squad at the moment, about 32 of them, just focused on the, on the, uh, New, Zealand, the New Zealand match. Talking about uh, the players that you have got then, Gareth Anscombe, you obviously feel he's he's ready to start and maybe a word to about Ellis Jenkins, you, you feel isn't. Yeah, so in terms of Gareth and, uh, and Reese, the two tens um, that we have, uh, we just think Gareth starting the game and Reese finishing the game is, is, is the way we want to go uh, for this match. Um, clearly, uh, Gareth has been out of the game for a long time, well documented. Um, they're both training very well. Both are very, very uh, keen in anticipating, um, you know, being involved in what's going to be a special occasion. So they're both very excited. And we just think uh, Gareth coming back from the injury, uh, the full match warm-up and then straight into the match is the best way to do it. Alan jones another landmark for him. There have been a few over the years. Are you planning anything special for this one? So just before going to that, you did mention Alice Jenkins as well. Um Ellis took a, uh, unfortunately, on the, on the road to, to joining camp, he took a bump in the, um, early on in the Blues, uh, sorry, Cardiff club match. Uh, that was a rib injury. So he's been training, but doing no contact. So um, he's just doing contact today for the first time. So that's uh, ruled him out of selection. Uh, Alan Wynn, um, yeah, what do we say? I think last season um, we were saying a lot about him because he, he just keeps achieving milestones. But I think, Biggest thing I would say about Al is just the sacrifice that he makes and the professionalism that he brings, the way he presents himself to every before every training session, and then the recovery protocols he goes through. It is the ultimate professional, and he's just such a, a great role model for for others in the group. And um, look, it's fantastic. He's going to go one more than Richie McCaw in, in the one jersey, um, 149. So look, just pleased for him. Um, but in Typical L shape. Uh, it's not about him. It's it's about the team coming together and having a, a, a great performance, which we'll need uh, to be competitive against uh, a very strong New Zealand side. And Tane Basham, part of the the Dragons back row. What makes you think he's ready for a game like the All Blacks? Yeah, it's a good question, isn't it? Um, and in some positions, it's it's we're going to find out during the fixture and after the fixture. Um, you know, Sevens are uh, an area where we've been hit hard with injury. Um, Tane obviously has been in and around our squads now for a wee while so we, we obviously rate him highly he's a player that's um, only 21 years of age but he's got a lot of strengths to his game and those strengths will be really put to the test this weekend and this is going to be um, a game which you know for him will be a, a big stepping stone in his career hopefully And finally from here just a question about the opponents everyone knows 1953 and all that um, what are your what are your feelings going into this this game against the All Blacks? Your your firm underdogs is is that good or bad? Oh well, you know that, that speaks for itself, really. Um, look, from our point of view, um, this match here, and we're talking about it as a squad. Um, you know, history is history. Uh, this group is together for the first time. This coaching group, but 
two years now we've been down to play New Zealand and haven't been able to do so. So it's one of excitement. It's one of um, let us loose, you know, 75,000 people. We haven't done that for a long time. So whichever group we put on the park, I think uh, they're all always going to um, come to the match full of excitement. What we've got to do is make sure that we control that and we, we uh, play with discipline over the 80 minutes. Thanks. Hi, Wayne, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Just, uh, just on that, you've had such a trouble build-up. You said you're firm underdogs. A lot of people have written you off. What do you make of all of that? Well, it's in sport. We see it all the time, don't we? And uh, I could probably sit here and rattle off Buster, uh, James Buster Douglas, Mike Tyson, you know, and in every sport, that every now and then you get a, you get a massive upset. Um, for us, we're not looking at it that way. We're just focusing on the game that we put out there. Um, we're going to enjoy the occasion because it's every Welsh boy's dream to play in front of 75,000 at the Principality Stadium. And the guys that I'm talking to in camp over the last 10 days, the opponent they'd pick to play would be New Zealand. So, look, it's a great fixture for our guys. Management, everyone's looking forward to it. Um, yes, it's been a, a difficult build-up, but, you know, more challenges. It's, um, it brings the best out in people, and hopefully that'll happen on the weekend. And what about you, Wayne? And New Zealand are coaching Wales against the All Blacks. You've had to wait a little longer for it. How are you going to feel on Saturday? I'm going to feel very Welsh. I can't get into New Zealand. I can't get back into that country. So um, as far as I'm concerned, I've been here seven years now, building up to um, and looking forward to playing New Zealand one day. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, we're due to go um, to Japan and New Zealand. Um, we're due to play them in the original autumn. Uh, so it's, it's one of excitement because I look at it just as, as our players do. You want to um, put yourself up against some of the best players and management in the world and, and test yourself. And uh, I'm no different from the players or anyone else in management. And in terms of singing both national anthems, will that be you on Saturday? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> A final one for me. Just, just on the squad, you brought in Alex Cuthbert and Scott Williams this week, Wayne. Um, you haven't brought in a back rower to cover because obviously you've got Seb Davis covering the back row now. You could have brought somebody else in. Was that because you thought Ellis was going to be fit for this game or are you happy with you say that Seb Davis is normally more a lock than he is a back row? Yeah, well, firstly, Ellis was, uh, it's, was a race against time and he's, he's, he's just missed out. Um, well, the decision was made. I mean, he'll be at the game on the weekend, for argument's sake, if we have an injury in the warm-up. He'll, he'll jump onto the bench. Um, it's where we're at with the squad at the moment, the numbers. Um, we have a requirement of numbers. Uh, we're, we're at that at the moment. And, um, you know, Seb Davis is one that we've picked in the squad to be able to play six and second row. Uh, and we have others in the squad that have um, gone across to play seven in the past, like Ross Moriarty at test level. So Aaron Wainwright, you know, outside of, of you know, your set piece scrum and line out, um, roles are, are fairly similar. So... Um, we're, we're reasonably comfortable with um, the way we've gone, um, with what was available, to be honest. Thank you. Hi, Wayne. Simon here. Simon, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Can I just check something you said to Gareth there? Could you, if you'd wanted to, have brought in an extra back row, say like Jack Morgan, who's been going well, if you'd wanted to this week? Was there a restriction on numbers you can have in camp? No, those are discussions we have. Um, it's administrative, administrative discussions behind the scenes. But look, we've got the number that we want. If we wanted to bring Jack Morgan in, we could. Um, right. For this particular game, uh, we've gone with Tain and we've gone with Aaron Wainwright and uh, Ross Moriarty, who can go across if need be. Um, and we've got Seb there, who's a big mobile bloke, adds to our line out. So where you gain from one, uh, you might gain another area with another player. And so we weigh all those things up. We look at the weather, we look at what's supposed to be coming, and uh, we think Seb will, will be the person that will require this weekend. One other name that's been talked about in terms of people who haven't selected is Jonah Holmes, who's obviously gone quite well to the Dragons over the last year. Can you just talk us through the thinking there? You brought Alice Cuthbert in. Any particular reason, having worked with Jonah in the summer, why he's not part of the plans this autumn? Yeah, I've spoken to Jonah and he's, he's aware of what he needs to do. When we select the side, we look at um, what's gone on at the Six Nations level, uh, the last Six Nations campaign, the summer campaign, and then we look at the credentials that other people bring. And when we looked at the way this uh, competition was panning out, um, Alex is the one a player that we didn't select originally. He's played two games now for his club. With Liam not quite making the start line, we brought him in for that cover and we'll learn a lot more about where he's at in his game. We know a lot about Jonah, so... Um, that's the decision-making process there. Lastly, from the inevitable question this time of year, looking at the weather forecast, what's going to happen with the roof, Wayne? Um, well, because of COVID, there is no option. It's open for the whole 
competition. Thank you. Good luck for this weekend. Thank you. I, I wait. Um, in terms of the back row, obviously, it's a bit of needs must, but do you feel they've got the attributes to sort of work as a trio? How have well, they been doing it for the last month? But, but what is it about them that work as a trio? I should have asked that, really. <laughs> well, I think if you've been watching uh, of late, Tane's um, involvement, his, his work rate has improved. He's got himself fitter since the summer series, which is one of his work-ons. Uh, also, his discipline's a lot better. Uh, and he's now hungrier and working harder over the ball. So we think that he's, he's, his all-round seven game is improving. Um, and, you know, he, he's a player that we've had in the last couple of squads, and we want to keep developing him and working with him. He brings other aspects to the sevens game as well. He's got a lot of power. He's got um, good anticipation. He has big moments in games. So it's just getting that all-round game going. And this is going to be a big test for him. Um, Ross is, you know, he brings a hard edge. He's, he's a big defender, gets through a, a huge work rate. Um, so in this particular game, we're going to need high work rate. And then you've got the athleticism uh, and the footwork, the attacking game of Aaron Wainwright. So... You've got the hard-nosed defender who carries hard and you've got the footwork and the athleticism and then you've got that all-round game of Tane and hopefully they'll work well together. That's all good for me. Cheers. Um, hello, Wayne. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Um, I just wondered, um, this match falling outside the window, I mean, does it frustrate you? I know there's nothing you can do about it, but just as a general point, given this is a showpiece fixture, do, do you find it frustrating or you know or concerning that is you can't pick your you know your strongest available side? Well, look, I think sometimes in rugby you've got to look at it and say the game is bigger than just one particular match, and it's looking after the game in general, um, and being a little bit closer to what goes on in terms of some of the financial side of our game in Wales talking about the clubs now as well as the WRU without this fixture I think we'd be in big trouble uh, I think it was a it was a must have um, but in terms of now the rugby well it's a massive challenge isn't it and we love a challenge and uh, we've got to go out there now and we see it as an opportunity an opportunity to learn more about young players um, we'll look back on this game regardless of uh, the performance I think uh, when we come time to the World Cup and we'll have more options to select from so from that point of view look it's it's a great fixture um, and we want to go out there and prove people wrong. Simple as that. Thank you. And ju just as a, just as a follow up to that, I mean, would you like to see a time where you know the finances of the Welsh game are such that you know they're not obliged to have the fixtures outside the window in order to keep keep the game afloat? You know, those decisions are made by others, um, and you know the answer that I'm going to give. But look, at the end of the day, we 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 look and we prepare sides for what's put in front of us. And uh, look, it's a challenging autumn, we know that, but um, it's an exciting autumn as well. And it's exciting not just for us, the fans, we've got people back at the ground, so a little bit more normality. And to be quite honest, we missed all of those things in the past. Thanks very much. Thank you. Hi, Wayne. Um Wales traditionally have been quite slow starters in the autumn, you know, going back well before your watch. Is that something you're able to explain? And is that something, anything you can do in the last, you know, nine days to to counter that, especially when you're playing a team like New Zealand, who've had a lot of rugby and are likely to be pretty slick? I can't really explain what's gone on in the past, but what I can talk about is what we've observed this time around. And that is, you know, you're getting the players from club rugby, um, we are probably a little bit underdone uh, if you compare ourselves with New Zealand with what they've come from in terms of international rugby. We've come from our squad being split across many teams um, playing um, four games now, in which case some of the players have played maybe one game or half a game. So it's you'd expect that to be a slow start, um, but we're doing everything we can in, in camp to make sure it's as we, we start as well as we can. The fact that there's a the crowd there, the fact that we're going to have an awesome atmosphere, the bus ride and everything else, I would like to think that, uh, you know, we'll start as well as we can. And, you know, the preparation allows us um, two weeks and that's that's what we've worked with. And just as a, as a follow-up to that, does, does, does this put extra onus on that first 20 to make sure that you're not out the game before it's restarted? Oh, any game, no matter, you know, whether it's this autumn series of Six Nations or World Cup game, you know, both teams are trying to get the fast start and that's certainly what we'll be trying to do. Thank you. Thank you.